1974, when impeachment articles were drafted against President Nixon in the Watergate scandal, uh, the House accused Nixon of approving, condoning, acquiescing in, and counseling witnesses with respect to the giving of false or misleading statements. 74. We saw it again in 98, when the House drew up articles of impeachment against then-President Bill Clinton. The House accused him of efforts to influence the testimony of witnesses and to impede the discovery of evidence. Influencing witness testimony, counseling witnesses to lie. It is against the law. It is also documented in the history books more than once as grounds for impeachment proceedings against a sitting president. Which means if you are the president or perhaps one of the president's lawyers, uh, you might have had some alarm bells going off given what Michael Cohen just said to Congress. On page five of your statement, you say, and I quote, you need to know that Mr. Trump personal lawyers reviewed and edited my statement to Congress about the timing of the Moscow Tower negotiations. Who were those attorneys? Jay Sekulow, from the White House? Yes. Jay Sekulow, I believe Abby Lowell as well. And you have a copy of your original statement that you can provide to the committee? I can try to get that for you. Having the original statement means you can compare it to what he ultimately delivered, which should tell you what the president's lawyers advised him to change. Gulp. Joining us now is Lanny Davis, Michael Cohen's legal advisor. Mr. Davis, I really appreciate you being here tonight. I know that you have been having a pretty busy week. Well, first of all, this is the second time, Rachel, that my first out of the box after intense Michael Cohen experience is your show. So maybe we'll go for a third one. Maybe we'll make, this, you, we'll make this a tradition. Let me, let me you. ask you about the intensity of Mr. Cohen's experience right now. We saw that he spoke with the House Intelligence Committee today behind closed doors, but then they announced that he's coming back next week. Had that been the original plan or was that uh, a change that was made today? It was not the original plan. In a way, Michael was more effective today than he even was yesterday when he exceeded all of our expectations in working with him because today new information was developed that really could be um, game-changing. And uh, Chairman Schiff and everybody in the room who wasn't a partisan Republican praised him for his honesty and forthrightness. And the development of this new information is the reason that he's coming back next Wednesday. Obviously, you can't uh, tell us in detail about the nature of the testimony. That's why it was behind closed doors. But in general right. terms, um, when you say new information was developed, is this information that's core to the Russia investigation or is this new information about the kinds of things that he talked about in detail yesterday? I would say it's not core to the Russian investigation, but Mr. Trump has missed uh, the big picture. There is plenty of evidence of a conspiracy to collude with Russia. But this is about lying and obstruction evidence. Hmm. And I think that the Trump White House and Mr. Trump himself doesn't seem to have read the definition of obstruction of justice or of suborning perjury. And that's about the best I can tell you, but it's uh, pretty explosive. Um, on the issue of potentially suborning perjury, I just played that um, short yes. segment back in, where Mr. Cohen had the back and forth with Jackie Spear. She asked him if he was going to be able to provide the initial uh, first draft, essentially, of his the, that letter that he wrote to the Intelligence Committee in 2017 that ultimately was the basis of his guilty plea that he had provided false information to Congress. Um, how should we understand uh, the importance of that and what Mr. Cohen was offering? Thank you for asking, because... If Congresswoman Spear hadn't asked that question yesterday, I couldn't respond because of the ground rules of, a, of an Intelligence Committee briefing. But yes, there will be an additional amount of information comparing the first draft that Michael wrote and the reiterations called red lines that a collective group of lawyers called members of a joint defense agreement. And then the final iteration contained an absolutely knowingly false statement, not only by Michael, that he did no Russian Moscow Tower activity after the Iowa caucuses. And let me just tell you one example. So Donald Trump would have a rally after the Iowa caucuses. The campaign begins, as we all know. And he'd be at a rally telling everybody, no Russia, no discussions, no collusion, no Russia. And his rally crowd would cheer and believe him. 
within a few minutes, he'd be walking out of that rally, and he would turn to Michael and say, so what's going on in Russia? What's going on in Moscow? It was that blatant, and that much is in uh, the public record, and there'll be more developed next Wednesday uh, at the Intelligence Committee. Mr. Davis, can you stick with us for just one second? I have a clarification I want to ask you on that specific point. One other thing I want to ask you. Can you stick with us for a moment? Absolutely. Great. Lenny Davis will be back with us in just a moment. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.